Hello my amazing viewers and subscribers, welcome back. Thank you for the continuous support, may God bless and perfect all that concerns you in Jesus name, Amen. In this episode, I'll be telling you 4 things that you must avoid if you want to be very consistent in your midnight prayer life. The midnight hour is very important and strategic. It is a time of transition from one day to another, and both good and evil takes place during that time. The enemy launches attacks at midnight and that's the time people are more vulnerable to spiritual attacks. As a child of God, you must always pray at midnight. Keep watching to the end to see what you must avoid. God bless you. Mary, as you step out today, you will experience misfortunes and limitations. Nothing good shall happen in your life. I curse you tonight. I command the spirit of Deborah to visit your finances. Why do I have this strong urge to pray? But I feel so tired. I need to sleep. I'm stressed up and tired. Let me sleep. Tomorrow night I'll try to go to bed early so that I can wake up and pray at midnight. Nothing kills midnight prayer life like physical tiredness. That's when you feel stressed. Have you ever woken up at night, feeling the urge to pray but you got distracted or too tired? In Matthew chapter 26 verse 40, after Jesus took his disciples to the mountain to pray at midnight. When he came back, he found them sleeping because their eyes were heavy. His disciples were tired and so they slept off. What did Jesus tell them? He told them to watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit is indeed willing but the flesh is weak. The body is the temple of God so you can choose to discipline this body. After a long day, it's easy to feel too tired to pray. Your body just wants to rest but remember, prayer can actually refresh your spirit. Try to sleep early if you know you'll be waking up to pray. Search your alarm and you'll notice that with time, you'll wake up on your own to pray at midnight. The Holy Spirit will wake you up when it's time. Please, let's not be lazy or weak in the spirit. Midnight prayers is very important. You can pray for 15 to 30 minutes to one hour depending on how you can hold it. Honey, didn't you say that you're tired and you want to go back to bed? Yes, I did. But then I stumbled on something interesting on the internet. You and internet. You get so easily distracted. There's time for everything and if you're feeling an urge to pray, I think you should. Don't be so distracted by whatever is happening on the internet. Let me just go through my wire count. Once I'm done browsing, I'll sleep. Another thing that kills our midnight prayer life is living a distracted life. In Matthew chapter 6 verse 6, Jesus says, and thy father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. One of the reasons that Jesus told us to go to the secret place is to help remove distraction from our lives. Oftentimes, we exchange the heavenly for the earthly, the spiritual for the secular. God wants to give us encounters in his presence. God wants to speak to us. What do we do instead? We trade what he wants to give us for what the world wants to give us. We trade his voice for our time scrolling down the social media. We'd rather hear what's on the internet than what is coming from heaven. But we have to remember, He is the Lord and we are the servants. We must learn to honor the Lord's presence with our time and attention. We must learn to carve out times in the day or at night, and even at midnight, where we give our attention to Him, worship Him, become attentive to His voice. It's easy to get distracted but you have to decide. When you don't feel like getting up to pray, get up to pray. When you don't feel like turning off the phone or shutting off the television, or removing distraction and entertainment. When you don't feel like altering plans, just do it anyway. We don't live by feelings but by faith. What's going on? This car has refused to start. What should I do? Let me inform my mechanic and use a ride to get to the shop. Hi neighbor, what's wrong? It's my car. It just wouldn't come on. Oh that's sad. How about I drop you at your shop? That's so thoughtful of you. I was about booking a ride. We are neighbors, we are supposed to help each other. Nysala's girl is calling. Ma, we've been robbed. Not again. Not again. I am on my way. What happened? What did they take? They took all the money and some groceries. Some guys came into the shop with a gun, they used a mask and robbed me. We should inform the police. I'm so sorry about what happened. I'll be on my way now. I hope with the CCTV, 
the police will be able to arrest those criminals. I don't think so. They were all covered up. This is just the beginning. Mary, you've not seen anything yet. I'll make sure you go from 100 to 0. I hate your guts. That woman is always disturbing me with her prayers at midnight. She won't allow me to operate peacefully, I'm glad that she's now spiritually lazy. I can now operate in peace. I hope her prayer life continues to be weak. She used to be so consistent, but now she's weak. Avoid being inconsistent. If you only pray at midnight once in a while, it can be hard to keep that habit alive. Consistency will help you build a strong connection with God. Spiritual laziness comes with a lot of negative effects, which includes inconsistent prayer life, inconsistent devotion to the Word. Some people give up easy, they quit because they say they don't feel like praying, the joy is gone, the feeling is gone. But we are not to live by our feelings, but to live by the commandments of our Lord, who tells us to pray without ceasing. If you're consistent in midnight prayers, you'll become passionate about it. The Bible says we should be vigilant, we should be watchful. Jesus was passionate about his prayer life, it was not only his regular habit, but his result in every emergency, however slight or serious. Here are ways to help you cultivate a healthy and consistent midnight prayer life. 1. Set an alarm to wake you up by midnight to pray. When you wake up, please don't sit on the bed to pray. Avoid overfeeding yourself at night. Sleep earlier so that you can get up to 3 or 4 hours of sleep before the alarm rings. Make sure you have healthy motives. When praying, use the scriptures to pray. Also, make room for Jesus to speak to you through the scriptures. Allow the Holy Spirit to lead you during your midnight prayer time. He can speak to you, direct you, and give you instructions through the Word. He can also bring things to your remembrance. We need to be sensitive in the Spirit and also listen to God. Please, stop thinking about this. What did the police say? They're still looking into it. Don't worry, all will be well. Lately, so many things have been happening to me. I'm blaming myself for being so spiritually lazy. Last night I had this strong urge to pray but I didn't. Who knows, maybe this won't have happened if I had prayed. There is no need blaming yourself. All you need to do now is to be on fire for God again. Rekindle your prayer life and you'll just be fine as always. You're feeling empty because you know that you're now lukewarm. Will God listen to me if I repent? One voice is telling me that God has abandoned me and is angry with me. No, that's the voice of the devil. Don't let guilt convince you not to pray. God is a God of second chance. He's a merciful Father. He loves you and He wants you to come to Him. Often, believers approach God wondering if He even wants to hear from them, because of the sins of the past, because of the mistakes they made beforehand. Some believers believe that God is angry with them, or they imagine that God loves them but He doesn't like them like that. They imagine that His patience is like a thin thread that's just about to snap and they're right at the verge of having God removed from their lives, and that He is going to take the Holy Spirit with Him. But here's what the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 9 verse 13 to 14, under the old system, the blood of goats and bulls and the ashes of a heifer could cleanse people's bodies from ceremonial impurity. Just think how much more the blood of Christ will purify our consciences from sinful deeds, so that we can worship the living God. For by the power of the eternal spirit, Christ offered himself to God as a perfect sacrifice for our sins. You cannot approach God properly with a dirty conscience. This is why it's so important that we embrace repentance and then the forgiveness of God, because the enemy acts as the accuser. The moment you begin to pray, the moment you begin to seek the face of the Lord, the enemy comes and begins to accuse you of things you've done in your past. He begins to accuse you of the mistakes that you've made, and using your mistakes against you. He tries to convince you that God doesn't want to hear from you. He tries to convince you that heaven is shut on you. He tries to convince you that you're not worthy to ask for forgiveness, that you're not worthy to approach your heavenly Father. Now there may be some truth in that, but we have to remember that the blood of Jesus applies to everyone. 1 John 1 verse 9 tells us that if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He's faithful in that He does it consistently. He's just in that He does it based upon the sacrifice that Christ made to you. Stop allowing guilt to stop you from praying whenever. 
instead of wondering if God has forgiven you, simply embrace the fact that He already has, and therefore you're free to move into the depths of prayer unhindered by your past. Romans chapter 8 verse 1, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. It's midnight. Thank you Jesus. I should pray. Psalm chapter 125 from verse 1, They that trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion, which cannot be removed, but abideth forever. As the mountains are round about Jerusalem, so the Lord is round about his people from henceforth even forever. For the rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous, lest the righteous put forth their hands unto iniquity. I stand upon this word of God and decree that the rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the righteous. Every rod of the wicked stretched forth against me, against my household, I cut it off in the name of Jesus. According to the word of God in Obadiah verse 17 that says, But upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance, and there shall be holiness, and the house of Jacob shall possess their possessions. I speak deliverance into my life and I decree that I shall possess my possessions. By the power in the name of Jesus Christ. I rebuke every devourer in my life and my finances and I recover all the enemy has stolen from me. I plead the blood of Jesus Christ over my life, over my family and over this environment. Let the blood of Jesus speak better things on our behalf in Jesus' name. Remember, you must avoid these four things that kills your midnight prayer life, physical tiredness, inconsistency, avoid living a distracted life, and you must avoid letting guilt convince you not to pray. Please make sure you subscribe to this channel, give this video a thumbs up, share, comment and turn on the notification bell for more life changing videos. Thank you and God bless you.